Okay, next. We'd like you to limit the co-channel interference to neg 85 dBm. First of all, what's co-channel interference? There's, there's two types of Wi-Fi based interference in Wi-Fi. And the first one is known as adjacent channel interference. The second one is known as co-channel interference. Adjacent channel interference happens, has happened in the past almost exclusively in 2.4 gigahertz. And it comes because of those channel numbers that I just indicated on the last section here. Where the channels are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, but they are only separated by 5 megahertz, that was a mistake that the, uh, the early uh, Wi-Fi um, task groups created. It's a problem that we've existed with up until this point, and there's really nothing we can do about it at this time, except to know intelligently that there are really only three non-overlapping channels in 2.4 gigahertz. And they are 1, 6, and 11. We've got other presentations that go into the details of why that is. Uh, but for this one, I'll cut it short. And I'll just say that if you use any channels as the center frequency for your access point, other than 1, 6, and 11, then you're taking a chance that when that access point transmits or the client connected to it transmits, it will happen at the same time as another device that's on one of the other proper channels, 1, 6, or 11, because there's no built-in mechanism to allow us to identify someone who's off on one of these off channels. That causes a collision. A collision is when two devices communicate at the same time into the same RF area on the same channel, their signals blend with each other, sometimes cancel each other out, but almost always cause corruption of some type. Remember that with data networking, every single frame has to be perfect. Even one bit, if it's incorrect, means that when the receiver performs the cyclic redundancy check calculation, and finds it doesn't match, it discards that frame. In Wi-Fi, discarding the frame is an indication to the transmitter that it has to retransmit that frame again, and possibly again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until it finally gives up or it's successfully received. So when we're standing there, sending the same frame over and over and over again, instead of moving on to the next one, you can probably guess what that does to our performance. It drives it downward. So that's adjacent channel interference. Now co-channel interference, slightly different. Built into the 802.11 mechanism is an ability to first listen to the airwaves to determine if somebody is already talking. And if they are, we politely back off and wait for them to get done talking. It's kind of like a, an old rural uh, party line, telephone line. In which case we pick up the phone, somebody's talking, we hang up, and we keep doing that until it's finally clear and then we place our call. And that's the way Wi-Fi is intended to work. But it can only do that if the center frequencies are all, if everybody's on the same frequency. So if everybody's using channel six as their center, then co-channel interference is the result of many devices all properly backing off on each other. So it's a proper form of interference. It's self-governing in this respect because the more devices you have that want to transmit on channel six, the more they are politely backing off and saying, well, why don't you go ahead and talk? I'll wait my turn. And then when you're done talking, I'll go ahead and talk. You can see that the result of that is slower performance, but not because of collisions. It's because of just too many devices on the network. That's why we need to use as many separate channels as possible to give everybody the least amount of co-channel interference possible. With adjacent channel interference, when we listen before talk, let's say that we've been configured to transmit on channel three, and there's another access point configured to transmit on channel six. When we listen before we talk, we don't hear the, each other because we're not on the same channel. So there's no built-in mechanism to prevent that. So we both talk causes collisions. Collisions are, are destructive. Whereas co-channel interference, 
more devices means less opportunities to transmit. That translates to less performance, but not because of collisions, because of politeness. And I said that that's corrosive. It corrodes your, your performance, but it doesn't destroy it, like adjacent channel interference. Okay, so co-channel interference. I said you want to make sure that your co-channel interference indicator is set to neg 85 dBm or weaker. Let's see what that means. So looking under channels, we've got a list of devices that are configured on channel one. All of these devices here are on channel one. So we look on marker number two, and over here, we see the signal levels, and we match up uh, all the devices over here. I'm looking at the signal strength, receive signal strength indicators, RSSI values here, and I have only colorized the ones that have a signal strength greater than neg 85 dBm. And we see that in this list of devices all on the same channel that have a signal strength of neg 85 dBm, that means they can all hear each other. Where do we get that number? It's, it's kind of a long uh, and sometimes often disputed reason that we use the number neg 85 dBm, but it basically comes to this. If I want to transmit, I listen to the channel first, channel one in this case, and if there's energy on the channel at or above neg 85 dBm, that's like that party line, I assume somebody's talking and I hang up and I wait. So if it is at neg 86, then we'll say, okay, there's energy, but it's kind of low, I'll go ahead and talk, I think I'll, I'll take the chance that I won't be involved in a collision. Okay, so. We have four access points. These four access points account for 17 SSIDs on channel one, all with the possibility of wishing to transmit on channel one. Remember in Wi-Fi, only one device gets to transmit on the channel at a time within hearing distance of each other. So we step over here now to the stations column, which is marker number three. And again, just the devices that are within hearing distance of neg 85 dBm or higher. We see 94 clients are currently on channel one in addition to the 17 SSIDs. The 17 SSIDs indicate access points that will have to transmit periodically to send out beacons, probe responses, different types of management traffic. So if you add 94 and 17 together, that's how many devices are contending to send out a transmission. That's too many. So in this case, baseline best practice number four fails. The reason why is four access points, 17 SSIDs, 94 clients, all on channel one, all within a hearing distance of each other. These if this has been left to automatic radio management controls or resource or radio resource management controls, it's not working properly. And if it's been configured manually, it hasn't been configured manually properly. So there should not be that many devices all on channel one in that one area. Ideally, from any location, you should only see one radio, access point radio on each channel at neg 85 or higher. So it's okay to see others on that channel as long as they're below neg 85. And how do you do that? It comes, that's where the design part of this comes in. So if your, if your controllers are taking control and doing this for you and they're not doing it properly, you need to probably take command and go into manual mode and manually configure these access points so that they're being, um, distributed properly. And these are the little more detail which I'll let you read offline.